right? Is it recording? Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, good, good. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> okay, do you just want to give um, a little intro of, of who you are and, and what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Jonelle, and I am the creator of Wild Altar. And yeah, I, I teach, I write, I cook and nourish. Um, my website is all about nourishing the body, nourishing the mind, nourishing the spirit um, with food, with plants, and with ceremonies and practices and rituals. And I've recently developed an online cleanse course, um, the Body, Mind, Soul Cleanse. And it talks about cleansing practices for the whole Whole body and not just the physical body but the mind and soul as well um phenomenal yeah cool so i'm definitely gonna link to all the places to find you down below in this video um and definitely including linking to your cleanse so for me and why i wanted to talk to you because i'm excited to start your cleanse and janelle i mean we've been best friends since we were 12 and it's always kind of been a theme that you're the one who provides the nourishment. And I love when we do live together and when our lives are together because it's like, oh good, there's someone who's gonna take care of me and like put me in this sort of organized way where I can eat healthy and actually take more care of my body because that's something that I sort of let fall by the wayside and just like eat whatever is around and, um, so this morning got to watch the beginning of what your course is gonna gonna be and it was exciting to realize oh this is gonna be a container to put myself in that is going to help take care of my body as a vehicle for what really matters to me and i know also matters to you which is like spiritual experience so could you just kind of I don't know if you want to start with sharing, you know, some of what you've recently been through as far as sacred practices. Just why does it, for those of us who are more inclined to, you know, realize that the physical is not all there is or even that it's a, an illusion compared to our spiritual truth, like why does it matter what we eat and what mm -hmm. we put in our body and how we take care of our body? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, when, when we started talking about this this morning, I had the, um, the line come up, like the spirituality of food. And I just kind of thought about it as like everything we consume, everything we take in. Mm -hmm. And um, I will start uh, like what I've been doing recently, yeah. like most recently, because that seems the most important. Poignant. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so last week... Um, I got this intuitive hit that it was time that my, like my body just was asking for a fast. And so I decided that I wanted to do an all liquid fast and asked, um, intuition, asked my body how long it wanted to do that for. And it said five days. So I started, you know, maybe a couple days later after getting that hit of just having liquids. So water, tea, medicinal broths, um, coffee, juices, um, and even like the first couple of days I had kefir. Um, and it just, it felt like initially I had just some stagnancy in my gut and it needed to like, I just needed time and space to digest mm -hmm. like food that had become stagnant. Right. And so when I first started, it really definitely was like, thinking about the physical body and moving things through physically. And then after a couple of days, I realized that this was really opening me up spiritually and energetically as well. And not only was I digesting this food and moving that through, but also experiences that, and like memories that I had totally forgotten about and experiences that I had repressed, traumas from my childhood started surfacing and it was just like this way of me being able to digest my experiences and digest my emotions that were also stuck. And a lot of it was about the liver and things that had become stagnant in my liver. And um, 
yeah, using this fast as a way to not just move through physically, but also energetically as well. And by taking out, you know, whether it's like the distraction or kind of like the energetics of food in general mm -hmm. and just really focusing on meditation, focusing on hydration, focusing on the um, plant medicines that were coming to me. Um, initially, there was a lot about dandelion and dandelion came in and uh, facilitated basically like a really massive spiritual awakening for mm -hmm. me and coming to this power um, that I have that we all have mm -hmm. to connect with the spirit of things and for me it was all about like really connecting with the spirit of plants and there were some you know different different interactions I had uh, with like ancestors and things like that that came up but mostly it was about the plants and um knowing that not only were they helping me physically like drinking this dandelion tea was good for my physical body cleansing out my physical liver but also it was the aid in bringing up all of these emotions and all of these things from childhood and helping me move through those and being just like this really solid friend yes. and guide throughout this process yes and reconnecting me with um my innate you know capability and capacity to connect with nature and how important that is for me and um you know not just like thinking about this the spiritual benefits of of plants but like really actually getting hits and messages from you know certain plants of like how to use them very mm -hmm. particularly like yellow dock was right. a plant that came in that was totally new to me i had never really even heard of it but got the intuition use yellow dock and it came through like drink the yellow dock tea twice a day for seven days very specific very specific once a month you know and it's just like okay <laughs> Okay. So, so what I'm hearing you say mm -hmm. is that physical ritual and practice like this, very intentional, whether it's fasting, which, you know, you've done a lot of fasting in your life. So to do five days of liquid fasting, like you've done a lot of practice to prepare your body to be that kind of vessel. Like some people might think that that's really intense, but even I guess what I'm hearing you say is that being intentional about these physical practices with your body can prepare you to be a spiritual channel mm -hmm. in a way that if you just feel like it doesn't matter what you do with your body like this created the channel that allowed these emotional and spiritual experiences to happen yeah absolutely like it, it was it became really evident how easy it was to tap in to you know that spiritual realm and kind of like just be way more sensitive to things and like the last day of my fast I went out in the woods by myself and didn't have any water didn't have any food didn't have anything many vision and quests had a lot yeah had visions had like really powerful encounters with spirits um could hear very very clearly the messages that were coming in which does get distracted if we're feeding our body junk and we're putting in like stuff right. into not just our right. physical body but also right. our auric field it like acts as a filter from receiving that clarity right because you know for me and i think for a lot of the people in in you know this spiritual community that we're both a part of and but especially for me it i it's like okay well my thoughts create my reality right so it just, so I don't want to be thinking junk thoughts and I don't um, so two things come to mind about this though which is one like okay my thoughts do create my reality but then my thoughts create the way that I'm taking care of my body mm -hmm. and then the way that I'm taking care of my body again affects my thoughts because mm -hmm. we also watched that movie last night heal which is really amazing I'm gonna mm -hmm. put a link to that movie and a lot of that movie was all about, you know, various types of holistic healing. Food was a huge part of it. And a lot of these people who have had spontaneous healings from cancer and things like this, like the number one thing to do if you have some kind of illness 
okay, but like, why does it need to be, can the number one thing to do is change your diet. Mm -hmm. Why does it need to get to the point of cancer? Like, how about if I have been feeling a lot of anxiety lately, which is something that, as I've told you, I have absolutely been observing mm -hmm. in myself. It was like something clicked between that movie and thinking about your cleanse where I was like, okay, you know, I acknowledge that my environment and my relationships affect me. What if what I'm putting in my body is having a lot to do with this? Yeah, definitely. It is. And I, I mean, speaking a little bit more Ayurvedically, like... Yeah. Um, what is Ayurveda? Ayurveda is the sister science of yoga, and it's a science of wellness. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's a philosophy that takes into account a person's whole being, their entire life experiences, their body constitution, their, you know, what they're doing day to day, and basically formulates the kind of perfect equation for them, um, exercise, food, um, kinds of like meditation techniques. I mean, just like everything that you would need to bring your body into its best expression of balance. Right. And um there's 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 three qualities of food you know and things that we can consume and it's uh sattvic tamasic and rajasic and sattvic is just like totally neutral things that like absolutely bring you total balance and um that are really soothing to the body and rajasic is more like fiery it's things that like bring energy movement so um, what's an example of sattvic versus like an actual food mm -hmm. um like kitchari would be like a very sattvic food mm -hmm. um you know porridge like, po yeah porridge like rice like really simple things like um sesame seeds and like some even like kind of having um, different milks and things like warm milks can be like really sophic. So things that are just like really soothing. Uh, Rajasic would be like spicy foods, alcohol, caffeine, um, even sugar, like things. That, Vinegar? I don't know. Probably. That seems like mm -hmm. something. More aesthetic versus yeah, basic yeah. is kind of what I'm hearing. And like um, when you're talking about anxiety, it's like if you're feeding your body and fueling it, all of that fire and heat well that's what i'm thinking is that's the only kind of food alcohol. that i eat yeah. <laughs> then it's like it does right. create this like more fiery and anxious kind of environment right and then uh the other um tamasic is like heavy foods it's like dull it's a very dulling quality so like oily heavy um yeah, those can make us kind of like slow and lethargic, right? As opposed to okay, fiery. So it's like all like about... a big mashed potatoes or something. I mean, that could go either way yeah. depending on what was in it. And so you know, and it's not saying Rich like don't pasta. have any of that. Like right. it's just like finding that perfect balance of all of those things right. for your constitution to bring you into mm -hmm. the best balance. Mm -hmm. And so then there's like your general constitution and mm -hmm. then there's like the relative whatever circumstances you're going yeah. through in your life. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say too is like there's not necessarily, and I think Ay Ayurveda really gets at this, like there's not some uh, general prescription for everyone that this is what everyone right. should eat. We all have different constitutions. Mm -hmm. And yet with something like your cleanse mm -hmm. that you have made, mm -hmm there are certain things that are probably going to be good for everyone to be aware of or like yeah. do yeah like chewing your food yeah. mindfully mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. drinking hot lemon water mm -hmm. yeah um a new one that i've learned that is an ayurvedic practice is to eat um until you have your first burp oh yeah we talked about that and i've been doing so one that, of the big know? like such a simple yeah. like eating practice and it, i mean it requires mindfulness enough to like notice if you have a little burp and when that is and saying okay like i'm done right because that is your body's signal that it's full enough Right. And first burp, stop, stop eating. Yeah. Like that's, that's, I've never heard that before. Yeah. It's a very simple, that's the kind of thing that's like, okay, I can yeah. remember that. I mean, sometimes maybe I'm going to keep eating. Oh, totally. And I have been the past couple of days. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I burp, but still I want more. And, but I notice that it's harder for my body to digest if I've eaten right. past that point. Um, so, you know, very simple things like that. And 
Um, part of the cleanse, you know, is like a seven day kitchery reset. And kitchery is recommended because what it's, is kitchery? Kitchery is a mixture of mung beans and rice. Okay. And you can add any kinds of spices to it. You can add vegetables to it. If you're feeling really constipated, you can add prunes to it. Um, it's just like it's a complete meal mm-hmm. and e- really easy to digest. Mm-hmm. And um, what's been your experience going on kitchery cleanses in the past? Yeah, um, it's it's a, it's challenging, you know, because it's like it's really basic and it gets really boring to eat kitchery for seven days straight. First of all, you know, I think that there's part of me that craves different kind of textures and flavors and it's just like okay this is kind of like dull but you know after a couple of days of it you realize how little you actually need to eat to feel very satisfied and full Mm. like just a small bowl of it Mm -hmm. reaches like this feeling of I'm energized fulfillment yeah exactly and having having that energy um to move through the day and like also uh being more clear and Mm. you know remembering to drink a lot of water through it I think I tend to not drink enough and then I get kind of backed up and like that's really unpleasant Mm -hmm. (laughs) like feeling just like stuck like there's stuff that needs to be moved out and it won't so that's where things like the prunes and things can help like move things through but like after after the seven days and like after that big like purge at the end uh where you're drinking like a laxative of some sort and just moving everything through not only does the physical like my physical body feel better but like i notice my mood feels Mm -hmm. so much better i feel joyous i feel light light i feel like this relief from anxiety my mind is clear um and it's just like I can see it on my face and in my eyes. Like, everything just feels clear and more radiant. Right. So, this is, I mean, to me, I hear all these things. And it's just like, you know, the importance and beauty of ritual and ceremony is that it's it's symbolic of, you know, it's like physical symbols of these spiritual things that are going on. And so, I guess I'm really excited, like, to start your cleanse. And to you know see how that affects my because i have made such a practice of observing myself observing where i'm having emotions and experiences in my body observing my mood and i just feel like this is sort of a symbolic you know it doesn't just have to be like a short cleanse that you do it's sort of this idea that always the way that your body is functioning and what you're putting in and what's coming out, you know, like for instance, if you're having a hard time eliminating or you're or you're too much is being eliminated or, um, you know, you're eating lots of sort of sugary, vapid, worthless kind of thing. Like this is just, it's all sort of this symbolism for the way that you're treating yourself spiritually. Mm. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. yeah, so like they, so, you know, if I'm like, oh, I only think positive thoughts and do all these great things, but then I just eat whatever and sort of treat my body like shit, like, yeah, as above, so below. Well, and you know, I mean, I think that you brought up a good point of like paying attention Mm -hmm. to it. And that's a big part of like the first, you know, the first couple of segments of the course. It's like, tracking the nourishment but not just what you're putting into your body but how Mm -hmm. what emotions you're feeling before you eat how you're feeling after you yes who you're eating with are you like what are you talking about while you're eating different things like that like noticing if there's any cravings that are coming up um i think that that's super important to know how we're eating and not just what yes Well, I mean, in general, I think for me, I'm just, I have tended to resist and ignore how big of a role, you know, I'm all about exercise and fresh air and I tend to, you know, and of course it's true to a certain degree, like the way that we feel about our food Mm -hmm. is going to affect uh, the way that it, that it interacts with us. And, you know, I just think that I'm excited to learn more and observe more and then be able to share more about how being intentional about nutrition and being willing to 
sort of just be um, caring about that can actually happen. I mean, just on a personal level, it's like you sent me this email, you know, and then we've had conversations this time that we've gotten to hang out where you have basically had these this amazing awakening into your psychic abilities that have always been there Mm -hmm. and have been very repressed and very covered over Mm -hmm. whether with fear or food or substances or Mm -hmm. whatever Mm -hmm. and this awakening that you have had has been like you can't separate it from this nutritional Mm -hmm. and fasting and just total intentionality Mm -hmm. with what you're putting into your body like those things are not separate you didn't just suddenly have a spiritual awakening like it was very much part of this process right because for me like I have used food in all sorts of ways you know to to numb to distract to um feel better you know like all sorts of ways to like use these substances to alter the way that I'm feeling right usually it's like for a different means, right? right? And so this way, using it in a way to alter the yes. way that I'm feeling yes. in a very positive way has me come out the other end right. and say like, oh, like I understand now why I would like binge eat. Yeah. Oh, I understand now why I would like drink to excess. Oh, now I understand like why I would do these things. And it's yeah. all very emotional. Like, oh, to belong. Oh, to like to feel loved, you know, like, um, and coming out of the other side of like an experience like this one, it's just like, there's now this like address to this core wound in me that now I understand, oh, like I don't need to act in those ways to like soothe that anymore. Now I can just like really love myself and really treat myself well and, um, find a middle ground because the opposite end is like this massive amount of control. Right. Over, and that, like, and I think I get really turned mm-hmm. off by that of this thing of like, oh, well, I can't eat this. Yeah. But that's also part of it with like, I mean, extreme spiritual practices are like that too. It's like eventually you want to find a middle way that's sustainable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes though, you need to spend, you know, and I've, I've never actually done this. So this is probably my higher <laughs> self talking to me. You need to spend three days in silence. Like oh, yeah. that maybe doesn't mean you're going to be silent for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. but probably you are going to become a lot more intentional about speaking. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like you go on a cleanse like this to start to get that activation of intentionality around, you know, your body and your mm-hmm. nutrition. And then like, yeah, it's okay. Like, cool. You eat French fries, like even from McDonald's and like you say a prayer over them mm-hmm. and you chew slowly and, mm-hmm. you know, even that helps. But in a, in a larger way, you're also like paying attention to like, wow, that feels different than mm-hmm. that potato that I dug up from the earth from my garden and boiled mm-hmm. and ate with my hands, you know? Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. Yeah, I'm just really, I'm really excited about this. I feel, I feel excited to be partnering more with people to be integrating like health in a, because here we are as humans, right? It's like, yeah, we are spiritual beings, but we're in these bodies. Mm -hmm. So like, let's take care of them. Yeah. And you've always been someone who has really helped me do that. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm excited to I'm excited to notice um, notice what's up. Yeah, as I go on this I'm journey. I'm excited for you too. Yeah, and for you to have the opportunity, you know, to take that nourishment into your own hands for one. You know, right. Like, you know, being with me, it's like, oh, she'll nourish me and give me whatever I yeah. want. But now it's like yeah. you're tuning in yeah. to your intuition of yeah. what you need. And right. That's what this whole program is actually about. Like, I want to empower people to tune in to their bodies, their intuitions, and know this is what I really need to be nourished. Like to have just like that sense of trust in oneself and not be so dependent on somebody else saying, eat this and this and this and you'll feel better. Like just everybody has their, you know, their own wisdom, their body wisdom, their spiritual wisdom within tapping into that like giving space for that I think is yeah is a crucial beginning 
And it makes me think of Louise Hay a little bit, who mm. you, you know, have this resonance with and who is one of my greatest teachers. And she, obviously she's all about, like, what you think creates your reality and, um, you know, uh, like, it's all about your thoughts. Well, Louise Hay also had cancer. And part of the way she healed herself was through her diet. And she was also a huge proponent of only eating unprocessed foods mm -hmm. and things that came from the earth. I guess my point is, it's funny the things that we want to make mutually exclusive. It's like right. either you believe that the world is all spiritual or like you only live in the material world. Right. And it's like, actually, there's... Well, it's all energetic. Like right. food is energy. Right. And it vibrates at different frequencies. Right. Okay, that's so... huge. You know, if and you're our, eating organic, local, seasonal food and putting love into it, like the vibration of that food that you're putting in is naturally higher than right. if you're eating things that were, you know, processed, made processed, without love yeah, and packaged in plastic. And colors and matter too, right? Colors yeah. can indicate the vibration of the food and like what mm -hmm. chakra they correspond to. Yeah, yeah. And so... Sometimes, like, really vibrant colors are good. Sometimes it's good to go on a bland mm -hmm. kind of, like, let's just, you know, and the Tao talks about that a lot, like colorlessness and silence mm -hmm. and all these things. Well, mm -hmm. um, you, you who are watching this, I, I really hope that you will check out John L's stuff. And I really hope that you... Uh, just look look at her website there's so much inspiration and check out this cleanse like if this resonates with you you're watching this for a reason even if you don't you obviously learned a lot of cool little tricks just from our conversation and also just like the spirit of this is divinity ranch to me like this is what i want to be doing is learning more from other people and supporting people who are following their dreams like you making this cleanse and all of the work that you've put into wild altar and really living your truth in the world has taken a lot of courage and a big thing that i want to encourage you to do is to follow your heart and um be seeing people who are living courageously and putting ourselves out there to give what we have to give. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. <laughs>